What's up, boxing fans? This is TBE Boxing, back at you again. Today's topic, Devin Haney versus Jorge Linares. The TBE Boxing post-fight breakdown and analysis. Let's chop it up and see what it's all about. Okay, boxing fans, let's talk some boxing today. All right, so let's talk about this fight that just we just saw recently with uh, Devin Haney and Jorge Linares. Uh, described it was described as a step up fight for uh Devin Haney to see if he you know he has what it takes Linares uh I've been pretty inactive of you know recently he hasn't really been doing a lot of fighting recently but uh Linares is a you know three-time world champion and he was a pretty good champion at that now this fight was pretty interesting, uh, okay, from, you know, you know, from uh, various different uh, angles, if we look at it, uh, in terms of, you know, what people expected from uh, Devin Haney and what they expected from, you know, from Linares. Now, I will be the first to say that Linares looked a lot better than I expected, okay, he looked like he came in, in shape. Looked like he was ready. Uh, he had a plan, and uh, he executed it. You know his plan pretty good, uh, from what I can see in this fight. Uh, basically, you know what happened is that Devin Haney was just a little bit, you know, had a little bit more output than uh, Linares, but for the most part, it was a, it was a pretty good fight. Uh, pretty good shown by both guys. Uh, you know, pretty good shown by Linares. Uh, showed that he came to fight and he came to win. And you know, uh, if he had, if he could have put in a little bit more output, he probably could have, you know, uh, came out. You know, uh, or the results could have been different. But Linares did say that. You know, he felt he felt that uh, you know inactivity was going to be an issue for him in this fight because he hasn't been fighting recently, and and it turned out he was you know a hundred percent correct. Uh, I you know when you look at the differences in the performances of both guys, which wasn't really that much, you know, of a difference in terms of you know uh, you know uh, output. Uh, like I said, Devin Haney had a higher output, but overall both guys had good performances. Now, uh, in terms of Linares, I guess you could, you know, chalk that up to uh, maybe some ring rust or maybe, you know, inactivity he has been very active and that could have contributed to, uh, you know, uh, him not performing as, as good as he, he would have liked to, even though, it, to me, he performed pretty well, okay? Uh, a lot better than I expected. Okay, so uh, you know you have to give it to Linares. You know he, he was a he put up a pretty good effort there. You know, but he just came up short. Uh, now, in terms of how the fight went, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, Linares, uh, you know, wasn't exactly the aggressor. It was more uh, Devin Haney pushing the fight. Okay, but uh, Linares was very effective in some of the things that he was doing. Uh, he was looking for that right hand, uh, that left hook right hand, and uh, he was able to land it once. And when he did land it, it hurt uh, Devin Haney. That was in the 10th round when he landed both of those punches, left hook and the right hand. And, you know, at the end of the round, right at the end of the round, and hurt Devin Haney, wobbled him, you know, put him on Queer Street. Now, Devin Haney, after the, you know, in the post-fight interview, said he wasn't hurt, but he got hit with a good shot. But, uh, I mean, I don't understand what he means by he wasn't hurt. I mean, he looked like, to me, like he was hurt from that punch. 
he stumbled and you know when you when your legs go from under you that usually means that you're hurt so he did get hurt uh in that tenth round i i would think and i uh, i think that punch you know uh put him on queer street and he should be glad that it was at the end of the round because if it wasn't he probably would have been in trouble now when they came back for the 11th round uh Linares continued to pressure him, but he, you know Linares was unable to uh, you know convert uh, what happened in the tenth round into a, a winning strategy for the eleventh and the twelfth round. Uh, he caught uh, Haney a couple of times in the eleventh round, but not enough to put him out. And uh, you know eventually uh, Devin Haney kind of got his wits back about him and then he started you know uh doing his thing in the 12th round and with the last part of the last half of the 11th and the 12th round okay so he, you know he kind of came back and started doing his thing again and uh so uh Linares was unable to uh convert you know that punch that he hurt Devin Haney with uh he was unable to do anything you know to uh, convert that into uh something that was beneficial to to him in in the fight at the end of the day you know so he ended up losing the fight but again uh i thought it was a pretty good effort by linares uh you know uh, he was able to hurt devin haney uh i did, it didn't look to me like devin haney hurt him much except for uh those body shots that devin haney was landing with regular you know regularity uh he landed some vicious body shots on Linares. Uh, I thought some of those body shots would hurt Linares. And as a matter of fact, I, I think that a lot those body shots probably kind of slowed Linares down to, to some degree. So that was an effective strategy by uh, Devin Haney. You, you know, he was really committed to uh, delivering those body punches, and he did deliver some good body shots. And those body shots, I thought, you know, had an effect in the fight in the sense that they probably slowed Linares down somewhat okay uh i mean those body shots was hard and it was coming you know with a regular you know with regularity so it was all all around it was a great fight actually uh devin haney showed his boxing skills uh okay yeah basically our boxing errors uh not by much i would have to admit though because the narrows like i said looked very good in there you know uh look i mean the narrows look you know, almost uh, better than I've seen him before. I mean, he looked better than in this fight than he did against uh, Lomachenko. In the Lomachenko fight, and to me, in the Lomachenko fight, it seemed to me that the difference between the Lomachenko fight for Linares and this fight for Linares was that in this fight with De Devin Haney, Linares, uh, you know, even though we was going towards the 12th round, 10th, 11th, 12th round, Linares look to me in this fight like he still had a he thought he still had a chance of winning and he was trying to win right up until the last round uh in the in the lomachenko fight i thought that linares after a certain point in the fight i thought i thought that he didn't see himself winning that fight and uh you know i thought that you know he at, at some point in the in the lomachenko fight he basically came to the realization that he he had no chance to win that fight okay uh as opposed to this Devin Haney fight to me it seemed to me that Linares always thought that he could win the fight right up until the 12th round so he didn't give up hope in this uh Devin Haney fight but he did I thought he gave up hope in the uh Lomachenko fight in the sense that no matter what he did in that fight you know Lomachenko had basically some way to counteract it okay in everything he no matter what he did he, he didn't seem to be able to uh slow lomachenko down or you know uh wasn't very effective against lomachenko he, he did knock lomachenko down in that fight you know a straight right hand that took Lomach put lomachenko down so yeah uh and he hurt devin haney but he didn't put devin haney down but it just seems to me that in the loma fight i i don't think that uh linares after uh, after the fight you know after, like by halfway through the fight linares didn't think that he had a chance to win that fight 
And uh, in the Devin Haney fight, it looked to me like he thought he had a chance right up until the last round. So he was a he was a different type of fight he was fighting. I thought he was fighting, um, uh, you know, in this fight, he was actually trying to win this fight. And in the Lomachenko fight, at some point in that fight, he didn't think he was going to win that fight. So that was a difference, I would think, in the way these fight progressed, you know, those two fights uh, from my perspective. Okay, that's how I saw it. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, uh, Haney, I mean, Lenaris was more effective in this fight than he was in the Lomachenko fight, even though he didn't, even though he knocked down Lomachenko in that fight, he was still more effective in this fight, uh, against Haney. He was able to land some good shots against Haney, okay. Uh, Lomachenko was a little bit more, uh, elusive than Haney was, uh, for uh, Linares. Okay, uh, Linares, this fight was pretty evenly matched up to a certain point, and I think that, you know, uh, where Devin Haney pulled it out, Devin Haney had a slight, I, I would think, a slight edge in hand speed, uh, you know, from Linares. Not by much, I don't think. I don't think he's, he's faster than Linares by much, but... Uh, he did have a slight edge, I would think, in hand speed, and he used that to his advantage, you know, by staying in the pocket and trading with Linares and then coming out on top, in most cases, with those trades. He was able to land more more punches. But, I, I you know, I, I got to keep going back to this. Linares looked pretty good in this fight. I mean, you know, uh, I got to give it to him. Uh, I You know, he looked revitalized, like he's ready to go again. I mean, I... If it was anybody else in here in this fight, I, I you know, I, I don't think they would have won. I mean, Linares was looking so good that I, he probably would have beaten most other fighters, you know, other than uh, Devin Haney, I, I would think. I mean, it's, you know, I don't know who you'd be able to put in there with him that, I, I, that I'm saying, that I'm thinking that he, you know, would have been able to beat Linares, like, you know, in that fight against uh, Devin Haney. I thought, uh, I thought that... Uh, Linares looked the best I've seen him in a good while. He looked great in there, actually. So uh, it was a great performance by both guys. You know, nobody had anything to be ashamed of in that fight. I thought, you know, uh, like I said, I thought Linares looked great. Uh, you know, I thought that uh, he put up a great fight, and it looked to me like he's revitalized and ready to go again. So I'm, I don't know who he's, you know, who he's gonna fight next, but uh, whoever he's gonna fight next, you know, they better watch out. Linares looked like he's back. Okay, and, and he's looking good. But uh, great performance by, uh, uh, you know, uh, Devin Haney. He put on a great performance. Uh, it was a tough fight for him. I can see that, uh, you know. Uh, but again, you know, I, 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 I'm I just thinking that, you know, it was a tough fight because the Niners was looking so good. And the Niners, like, like I said, like he's revitalized, like he's back from wherever he was. Uh, look, looking good in there, you know. Uh, so it was a great uh, performance by both guys overall, uh, but it just that Devin Haney pulled it out by you know outperforming uh, Linares slightly, okay, and was able to pull the fight out by unanimous decision. Uh, okay, uh, I, I mean unanimous decision. Yeah, that was a pretty. I guess you could say it was, you know, unanimous, even though I don't think the the decision reflected how the fight actually went in in one sense. I thought the fight was a lot closer, but it was unanimous. I would have to say that uh, Devin Haney won, you know, I, you know, I, I couldn't see any anywhere where we can say that Linares actually uh you know was the winner so having him you know losing in our card was about right but the fight was a lot closer than the card reflected even though not so close that it would have to be a, a any other than a, a unanimous decision you know but it was a close unanimous decision let's put it like that okay so yeah great performance by both guys uh Haney stepped it up in this fight showed some toughness Showed you he, he could stay in the pocket uh, if he had to uh, against a tough guy in the, in Linares. Showed that he could take a shot, uh, you know, and still uh, come back. 
and uh, it was a good shot. Uh, even though you know Devin Haney after the, in the post fight conference said that you know he he wasn't hurt, but he was hurt. Regardless of what he says, he was hurt. That punch hurt him, and he, and and I say again, he's lucky he was at the end of the round because if he was at the beginning of the round, he probably would have been in trouble, and we probably would have been looking at a new champion uh, in Linares. Okay, so that's how you know close uh, Devin Haney came to uh, possibly losing that fight with that punch, that that combination that Linares landed in the tenth round. Okay, so uh, now. A lot of people were saying that Devin Haney needed to get a step up fight, and this was a step up fight, I would suppose. And so now uh, we hear talk of him fighting uh, uh, Teofimo Lopez to become, you know, uh, the winner of this fight would really become undisputed if they were to ever make that fight. You know, uh, Leo, uh, Teofimo has been going around claiming that he's undisputed, but in actuality, he's not. Uh, until he, you know, he beats Devin Haney, he's just unified. And, you know, uh, we've been hearing a lot of talk from uh, Tia Fimo that he wants Devin Haney next after his fight with Cambosis. I don't know how, you know, how much, how true that is, if he really wants Devin Haney. We have heard, you know, Tia Fimo say that before, when he had first won the title, he wanted to fight Haney. And then we see him come with all kind of different excuses why he wasn't going to make the Haney fight. And, you know, running around saying that he's undisputed. And now we hear him talking about, okay, he wants to fight Haney. So we don't know how much of that is actually true, if he really wants to fight Haney or if he's just talking to be talking. You know, he's getting a lot of criticism out there, uh, you know, uh, for not fighting Haney and for claiming to be undisputed when Haney is there with a belt, world title, uh, and basically, what he's claiming to be undisputed is with the franchise belt, which is not re is not in reality is not really a belt of any consequence. So, I mean, I don't really see that franchise belt as anything more than a French fries belt. Okay, it's a fake belt. Uh, basically, it's a ducking belt. Okay, that's basically what a lot of fighters have been using these franchise belts to do. It's a duck as a fighters. So I'm not really putting too much credence in that whole uh, franchise belt. And I don't see the franchise belt as a belt that's going to make you undisputed. Okay. Uh, in order for uh, T.O. Fimo to become undisputed, he's going to have to fight Devin Haney. And, you know, undisputed is one in the ring, not with a belt that somebody sent you by email. So, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah. Uh, great fight. Great performance by Devin Haney. Looked pretty good in there. Uh, you know, didn't look as dominant as uh, Lomachenko did against Linares, uh, because we saw, you know, a more, uh, I don't know, it, 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 I, we saw a revitalized uh, Linares in this fight. Uh, a different guy than we saw in the Lomachenko fight. So that could have played a lot of, you know, a big part in how both fights turned out. Uh, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, solid performance by Devin Haney, great performance, solid performance by uh, uh, Linares. Both guys look pretty good in there. Uh, looking forward to actually see what Linares is going to be doing next, as well as what Haney is going to be doing next. Hopefully, we can see the fight between him and uh, Tia Fimo. But I'm not holding my fingers, I'm not going to cross my fingers. I, I, I mean, I'll cross my fingers, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Okay, we have heard uh, Tia Fimo talk this talk before, you know, and then only to just back out and, you know, uh, you know, and, and backtrack on what he was saying about fighting Devin Haney. So who knows? We'll see how it all plays out. But uh, Haney put on a solid performance. I mean, uh, you know, he showed that he's ready for the, he's ready for prime time. Uh Kind of surprised that he was hurt by the by that shot from uh, Linares, but you know Linares is a pretty good puncher, and uh, I think he couldn't hurt it. And we saw when he you know from the fact that he knocked down Lomachenko, okay, and he was able to sting uh, Devin Haney in this fight and you know hurt him actually. So uh, 
Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, Devin Haney was able to come back from that, okay? You know, it, like I said, luckily it happened at the end of the round, so he had a little time to recover in between rounds, and he was able to come back out there and uh, stay on his game plan and, and pull the fight out, okay? Uh, wasn't, you know, a wide margin in the fight, but it wasn't as close, it wasn't, it wasn't close, but it wasn't a blowout by any means for Haney. It was a solid win, but, uh, you know, uh, Linares was in the fight uh, right up until the 12th round, okay? So it is what it is. But, yeah, uh, great performance by Haney. Let's see what ha what's going to happen next. Hopefully, we're going to get that Teofimo fight. Don't know if he's ready for Teofimo uh, or if he can outbox a Teofimo. But we're gonna have we're we're gonna see uh you know uh Teofimo seems to be the kind of guy that steps it up when he gets in that ring, uh under the lights, and he's a big guy at uh, lightweight too. Uh, that is Teofimo, you know, uh, bigger I think thicker than uh Devin Haney. So it, it should be an interesting fight if these if those two fight it out. Uh, definitely Teofimo is a stronger puncher, and uh, if uh. If Linares could hurt uh, Devin Haney, then uh, Teofimo could hurt Devin Haney as well, and he could probably stop him. Okay, if he was to cut, catch him with a good shot, because Teofimo got a uh, you know uh, got power in both hands. So uh, if these two guys fight, uh, it sh should should be an explosive and exciting fight, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that. Uh, you know, if that was to happen anytime soon, but we'll see how it all plays out. But yeah, uh, great fight by Linares. Uh, good performance by Devin Haney. Uh, he pulled it out, you know, showed what he had. Uh, and, you know, what he have is considerable in terms of uh, skills. So let's see what happened with the next fight with Devin Haney. If it's going to be Teofimo or who is going to be one of the other guys in the lightweight division, one of the other tough guys out there. Uh, I'd, let, I'd love to see him fight Teofimo next uh or even Javante or ryan garcia when he comes back from his sabbatical but for right now uh devin haney uh was able to uh pull it off you know pull it out against linares in a pretty fairly a fairly tough fight for uh devin haney but he came out on top and he did pretty well so yeah uh that's all i have uh, i'm gonna leave it there uh, this is TBE Boxing. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure you go to tbeboxing.com. Get the latest news, uh, headlines, and commentary. That's updated daily. Again, this is TBE Boxing. That's all I have for right now. I'm out.